In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a, a mighty prophet in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he was going on further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us. For it is towards evening, and the day is now far spent. So we went in to stay with him. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Did our hearts not burn within us as he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, those who were with him, gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Have you ever experienced one of those moments where Something happened, and as a result, your outlook on life radically changed, and it altered everything about the way that you live. And that's what happened to the disciples of Jesus as they came to understand the resurrection event. And understanding that in Luke's account begins with the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. For the first nine chapters of Luke, the disciples were, for the most part, out of view. Then, towards the end of chapter 9, when Jesus begins his journey towards Jerusalem, the disciples begin to take a more prominent role. But they, like the crowds around them, fail to grasp the true identity of Jesus. They have their theories about who he is and even go as far as hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel, but they fail to grasp what this means. You could almost say that in the early parts of Luke, the disciples are being given dots that somehow all link together to form a larger picture that, when complete, makes sense out of life. Then, in the latter parts of Luke, they are trying frantically to correctly connect the dots, only to be left in a place of confusion as Jesus is crucified. But then, on the road to Emmaus, the risen Christ comes to two of them and not only connects the dots that are seen in Jesus' life, but also goes back to the books of the Jewish Bible and points out how Jesus truly fulfilled the prophecies of the promised Messiah. As time goes on, more and more of the disciples have the dots connected until in the second part of Luke's work, the Acts of the Apostles, the fifth book of the New Testament, this small band of Jesus followers whose lives have been radically changed by the resurrection transform the known world. 
While they were far from perfect, their lives displayed hope in the midst of turmoil. They pooled their resources for the common good, and they rejected the lifestyle choices of their neighbors in favor of virtues that they saw as being part of God's design for humanity. As an unbelieving world looked from afar, they couldn't help but be drawn to the lives of those whose understanding of reality had been transformed, whose dots had been connected by the resurrection. How about you? Well, you haven't had any dots formed by spending time with Jesus during his life on earth, and while odds are you don't have the dots of the Jewish Bible that you're trying to piece together, you do have dots that have been formed by your experiences in this life. Some of these experiences have been good while others have been trying. Some of them have brought joy while others have brought suffering. Some of them made sense in the moment, but others have left you completely confused. But no matter what the dots are, they all connect to form a bigger picture that makes sense of it all. The only question is how. Through the resurrection, Jesus invites us to a life where there is always hope no matter how challenging the trial, where the suffering that we do experience always has greater purpose, where the mundane moments of life are filled with meaning, where we are invited to take part in and be a part of creating moments, where the perfection of an eternity with Christ is experienced. When you think about your life, what are the dots that have formed over time that you are trying to connect? Have you ever realized that you misconnected the dots? What happened? Who in your life has been most influential in helping you connect the dots to make sense of the big picture? We encourage you to take a moment to blog on these questions or discuss them with those who are watching with you. As you think of questions that you'd like to ask, please submit them to the site so we can be sure to address them. You can also look at questions that others are asking and give them your stamp of approval. Questions that have garnered the most interest will be answered first. Please also feel free to post any prayers you have on the prayer board. You can find links to do all of these things below. Pause the video now and press play again when you're ready to finish the service. Oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.